Hi de hi folks, this is Yuri Gatan. Handy might be an ESTJ resembler. Liberal management methods are usually ineffective. So this is from a video that I did with Haley a few years ago. There you go. That's in the uh, live stream chat if you want to go to it. Or you can just search for Gutan in the search box for the channel. So one more thing before I move on. There you go. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Peter Schiff, mentioned for years. Dollar collapses. Told you so. <laughs> right. Um, now we're going to move on. There's Haley with her wide-angle lens. Uh, so then, TE. I and mean, when am I going to get show a little bit of guitar? That's like the teaser for the end. But I'll show a little bit now, just to show the katanness. Right, so yes, this is like the ESTJ stereotype. As you can see, this is because because what you what you have here, interesting in this program, you have like an artisan who's also a foreman, and you have Gatan, who I think is an ESTJ in the foreman role, which is a supervisory role. So you have the difference in role enactment between an ESTJ who's enacting his predisposed role and then you've got an artisan who's enacting the same role. Now, between the two of them, Gatan likes this one because he's more like a guardian and he'll say things like he's more level-headed, he's more responsible. The, one, the other one that's more like an artisan, he says, oh, he likes him because he's not passive he's more he's got more energy he's got more guess up and go so you can see there that the difference in values between what the artisan foreman values someone who's more like himself and then the Eurogatan as the guardian foreman now some of it's going to be a bit staged in order to get a competition between these two guys but it's still relevant typologically so let's see. Let's go through the quickly. And then here he is getting mad about it. She was like given a break. <laughs> it's like, have you gone mad? It's against procedure. You've been here for three days and you want to leave early as if it's a crazy request. Right, here we go. This is not very good Russian propaganda when it's like it's showing these guys just knocking off work and slacking around. Like, so artisans in Russia too. And you're here? Are you here to work or pick up chicks? Follow me. And this is about someone leaving early for lunch. Because she, I don't know if there's a thing about female crane drivers. I tried to be, I'll spoil her appetite for a week, I promise. No, here, like, uh, he's making a drink. And she says, oh, no, not with cold water. I don't like it with cold water. This one's for me. And then there, it's like, like, ESTJNE. Like, scan a little bit weird. Okay. Oh, yeah, and he, he loves his beautiful goldfish as well. Man, operation should be beautiful. And then, oh, I'm going to have a party. Then you need a stripper. We'll call you. I'll dress up in latex and dance to you. So you might think, oh, getting a little bit creepy. Already legal. But then, oh, man, I'm a handsome man. <laughs> I only charge where well, you can see what you can see. And then they offer him <laughs> my shoes for $3. So my point about that, though, is like you get in this like tertiary NE. And when STJs get older, they can get a little bit, have these moments where they sound like an ENFP. Just every now and then it's like, whoa, where did that come from? Um... And then, and then you're going to get some typical sort of like, so what I'm doing now is I'm giving you the sort of like the whole pattern of the stereotypical 
uh, ESTJ before I get into functions. All oh, right, you've got workshop head, and then the other ones are fun. There you go. Liberal management methods are usually ineffective. Right, and then you have to motivate them. You have to. You can't just talk them into working. So what you really have, like I said, you've got an ESTJ in the ESTJ's predisposed role, according to Kersey. So it's like, so what Kersey would say is, naturally, the ESTJ is a supervisor. And so uh, they fit the job of supervisor, hand in glove. Hand is the type, glove is the role. You have to force them. So again, because this is what the supervisor does. It's it like it enforces standard operating procedure. It makes the artisans get to work. If artisans didn't exist, supervisors would be out of a job, pretty much. You need to be tough and strict, and not everyone likes it. Usually people aren't happy when you demand things from them. They say nasty things behind your back, although they smile when you meet them. Right, and here's a little bit about uh, ESTJ. Have we run out of the Gatan stuff? Oh, there's a little bit more. Hang on a minute. Is there a little bit more? Nope, I think that's all the Gatan stuff. So, that's just some fun stuff. Um, yeah, the headstrongness. Got some FI there. With the guardian temperament, realism, bossism, yeah, tradition, moral conscience, uh, never stop, never stop, work, music, politics, next, that's yeah, from Daleks. Maybe in the creative subtype, somebody like Krista, we will get on to that. Yeah, realism, rules, tradition. Yeah. Yeah, this idea of realism crushing their dreams. Yeah, like you got that tertiary any. Yeah, that's well drawn. It like it gives the impression of the dreams being crushed up, almost like screwed up on a bit of paper and thrown away. Interesting. So now we get serious. Now we get to work. So here we go with the T E. So my point of that is you've got functions operating within the context of um, and there are more slides in that other video. Uh, you've got um, and again, oh sorry, just one bit of any. If it explodes your pants will be found three kilometers away when he's warning them. Like just these moments like you know, STJs when they get older. Right, okay. So, about this. So, we've got TE here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a different... I updated this slide when I had some input from Kristen. Uh, and so, I'm just going to put that there. So, if you... Yeah, I'm not covering anything up. Yeah. So all these different kinds of TE. And so what we have here with, and I think it's a good way to think about it because for me, Kersey temperament theory is the most empirical of the typologies because you have a system of intellects in Kersey that corresponds to function pairs in Jungian type. So, for example, uh, I'm going to be guesting with Jonathan on, on a channel of Haley Harbors, public name, uh, when we're going to be talking about NI. And I'm going to start by talking about, well, it's hard to explain what NI is, but I can explain what people with high NI can do. Uh, and so, and it's like, 
about developing. NFJs develop people, develop themselves. NTJs develop projects, and usually projects around objects, but they might use people to help, like CEO, chief executive officer, the head of a project, multi-year project, developing a jet engine over 20 years, something like that. Uh, very long-range strategic thinking. And so my point about that is, and then this role, so that would be TE with NI, and here you've got TE with SI. And here, SI is about stabilizing. But my point about that is that this Kersey theory is compatible with that about functions. And you're looking at something that you can see. Now, Kersey has these two halves to it. It's got all of this behavioral stuff, all of this action stuff, which makes people say, oh, Kersey's just a behaviorist. No, because it's also got a lot of stuff about motivation. What do the types want? Um, so let's do a big picture zoom out. And then we're going to, and then I'll talk about how TE is affected by this temperament. So general interest in commerce. So TE in that context. The orientation, stoicism. Pessimism, fatalism, gateways, yesterday. And then there, self-image, dependable, beneficent, respectable, trust authority, belonging, security, gratitude, helpmate. And I can give you an example of trusting an authority. So we have ESTJ Kristen. Now, ESTJ Kristen, an INTJ parent and an ESFP parent. And so they want, sort of wanted her to think for herself. But even in looking at this, quote that she gave and, and i see her as a creative subtype of uh estj and almost i know it's like a nice subtype not like gatan but she probably has those gatan <laughs> a little bit of that inside of her and she says no that's not right no be nice um but but this is this is a quote from her creative assimilation of established practices from various disciplines Combining TE and intuition can account for changing markets. So it's within the context of building off something that is established, that has a proven track record, and then she is implementing that creatively. Whereas the NTJ might take more risks with new practices but it's, it's say there and that's a quote from her here's a quote from her uh established practices and so it's you can say it's creativity within the confines or the parameters within a sort of a safety margin it's the it's because the, what is the point of view the motivation is not to try and be the most wacky and original thing guardians don't have a four in their trifix they just don't it's either two or three and so and also a big part of business is risk management. And the more new things and new steps that you have in a project, the less likely the project is to succeed. So, for example, look at the Zumwalt. Uh, well, really, it's a cruiser. It's given its displacement. So many new technologies that some of them failed and the, and the program got cancelled after three ships. So, and there's an expression in... Uh, in the Russian aircraft industry, that if a if an aircraft is over fifty percent new, it won't fly. Too much new stuff, it won't fly. And so, there's, there's this this idea of innovation within continuity. Innovation within continuity, 
and I'll get onto that later on when I get onto TI. So you have, and naturally, guardians are small c con conservative. They don't want to take risks. They seek security and trust authority. So when you trust authority and seek security, and when you, and then the social field matters as well. Say you're in the United States, very high legal liability, and and you can, and someone sues you, tries to sue you, and say, no, 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 I followed all the regulations, I followed procedure. Then business is somebody doesn't follow procedure and thinks too much outside of the box. And they're taking more risk and they leave themselves open to liability. So now the issue with that is in the United States is what you have is a lot of the authorities have become heavily corrupted. And so, for example, you will have um, the convention in the United States. Oh, yes. United States bonds are triple A value. What, when they pay a tiny amount of interest and inflation officially, uh, price inflation, is officially like 7% and in, in actuality about 15 That's what the authorities say. And then all these people that run these funds have to do what the authorities say because if they do anything different and they're, it's almost like it's very defensive. Like if they do something and their fund doesn't perform as well, they get fired. But if they do the same as everybody else and their fund does badly, they can say, oh, but it's just like everybody else. And then they don't get fired. So, so there's a lot of guardians in finance. A lot of guardians in finance. And Peter Schiff would say that a lot of people are just not joining the dots together. And I think it is all the convention, all the conventional stuff. So then. So uh, I'm going to get back to uh, TE. I hope it doesn't crash. Usually. Right, so then. So we've got slot one in the ESTJ. Top function TE. It's a cognitive process. It's, it's mentally doing things. It's a mental process of extroverting one's thinking into the world. And so there's going to be behavioral correlates to that because it's about application, and especially with these extroverting functions. And then I'll go over what extroverting is uh, in a slide in a moment. But in terms of this slot in ESTJ where, okay, what, what you're doing is, this, 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 this model is so this this idea that the top function of ESTJ is coming from two dichotomies: the fact that the ESTJ resembler, that someone with ESTJ preferences has an extroverting preference and a preference for directing their energies into the world. Uh, and for being externally focused and so and for empiricalizing and a preference for thinking and so their thinking is going to be colored by their extroverting and so based on those two so it's like the idea in the model that te is the top function is consistent with those two uh dichotomies or rather Everyone with E and T is going to have TE in this square here. So ESTP would have TE here. ENTP would have TE here. TE here. And ENTJ and ESTJ have TE, TE there in the model. But again, this is like a model in the behavior. And so what we can say about the properties of the function is um and i'll say which ones are sort of empirical and not so valued um sort of semi-empirical in that if you have enough of a conversation with estjs 
and you know what TE is and you know what TI is, and then you can sort of come to the conclusion, okay, this person values TE over TI. And you do the same. And then that's like the preference. Uh, and then now default situational. This is a little bit of a deduction from seeing if somebody has that extroverting preference. So again, you might say <clears throat> this person's extroverting and they have a thinking preference. Okay. If we say that their thinking by default is again, then it, by default is extroverting, then, okay, that's consistent. Uh, and then with the clubs, that is empirical as well. In with doubt. So you see this model is trying to be, this model is not trying to be wacky. It's not trying to be creative. It's trying to be consistent with the data and consistent with Kersey. Now it's consistent with the data in that Dario Nardi has found something that Vanderhoop noticed first and then socionics and then isabel myers now i think isabel myers oh hang on a minute am i short on a slide oh no 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 no, no i'm not sure a slide i just need to go here yeah again instinct to habit impulse to habit like yeah. So this is Van der Hoop, 1937. So he recognized the clubs. Like, they pretty much have to be the clubs because what else could they refer to? And again, this is this leans too much towards um, SFJ rather than SFPs. A lot of the NTPs, it's like, there is a temptation that it's like, if it's like 70%, 75% works, it's, just, it's like, ah, screw it, I'll go for it. Uh, but like technique, like SFPs could be interested, but you can see what's sort of going on here. But my point about this is that Isabel Myers then mentioned clubs, and I think she got it from Vanderhoop because her book, Gifts Differing, that came out in about 1980. Right, it referenced Van der Hoop's book, this book, Conscious Orientation, 10 times or 10 quotes from the book. But hardly anyone has read this book, even though Gifts Differing is a really popular book. So, and surely some Enneagram Fives must have read Enneagram Five, Enneagram Five, Enneagram Five Fixated Individuals have read Gifts Differing. And I'm disappointed in those Fives for not following up and reading this book and doing YouTube videos on it. Disappointed in you, fives, those fives that read uh, Gifts Differing. I only found out about it because of Shalena. And she resembles INFJ. And it's meant to be T uh, Polar. Anyhow, so about the clubs, then Socionics uses the idea that basically the club functions are the strong row functions, so ego and id. So, where am I now? The Dario thing. The Dario comments. Did I put it up there? I mentioned some the Dario on clubs here. So again, this is like the empirical nature. So it's going off something empirical. So this is from people who took the cognitive processes assessment. So the empirical data that this one in the middle. This suggests that pairs of functions such as sensing thinking, ST, sensing feeling, intuitive thinking, and intuitive feeling are highly relevant. So this is your empirical data that supports clubs being important. So we have a basis for the model going off three things that are either empirical or semi-empirical like valued like if you have enough of a conversation with people you can sort of see that 
especially if you really go deep and you're looking for preference versus behavior and looking for the preference and then default situation. Some people are in the middle, but like in the more people who are more like extrovert, like more of an extrovert in preference and more of a, especially if people are younger. And so you can see these sort of like three dichotomies are not like a lot of socionics dichotomies where they're made up within the model, like accepting and producing functions. It doesn't actually relate to anything that you can observe or talk to somebody about. Whereas these relate to um, more as about as empirical as I can get with relevant, important dichotomies. Right. And the fact that they play out and make sense and fit overall with the data. So this is like a TII NTP, NTP argument that, well, they, they are significant in that these three factors all play out. Right, it plays out in the theory and at the whole type level. So, uh, now, <laughs> I'll bring in a bit more Kersey about... Ben, we've had enough of Kersey. Uh, so, you've got this role here. So, I mentioned before, you've got Yuri, Yuri Gitan there in the role of the STJ. Oh, and I'll give you another example about the difference between type and role enactment. So, you had the character of Mackay in Porridge, which is a prison sitcom. I know it sounds like an odd situation. Uh, where you had Mackay, ESTJ, security guard. So type and role, you could argue, are indistinguishable from each other. But you had another prison guard who was a liberal, and he was all about not punishing the prisoners, reforming the prisoners, and he was called Mr. Barraclough. And so what you had there is... And these two prison guards were co-equal rank. But you saw the difference in role enactment. And you could say that with Barraclough, he had atypical role enactment. So there wasn't as, as enough to the character to say that he was an NF. But you could imagine that an NF prison guard or an NF working in the prison service would be about reforming prisoners because they're about reforming and developing people in general. And so their predisposition is coming into it. Coming into it. So the difference between type and role, and I'll always bang on about this to fight back against the people who have misunderstood Kersey. So Kersey had a, a theory of uh, intellects, and I'm not going to go through them all. Uh, I'm just going to mention those ones which are relevant and also two which cross over because of the imperfect alignment between club and Kersey temperament, because Kersey didn't do it as ST and SF. With Kersey, another factor came into play, and that is the fact that sensory instincting differs a lot between guardians and artisans, because you've got the instinct in artisans for excitement and stimulation, and uh, and audacity and adaptability and within guardians you've got the instinct towards it's more small c conservative going towards the authority going towards uh the tried and true going towards wanting to belong and so what that means is in terms of an evolutionary strategy the guardians are well placed to be team players and work their way up through uh, the system and the community because they're very much conventional to those community values the community values are their values and they move through that whereas the other evolution and this is where Robert Winston came up with this idea of evolutionary strategies and then you've got more of like the more of the ev so two evolutionary strategies for humans the theory cooperation so the Guardians would be about cooperation and uh, the Artisans would be about competition. Now, when someone is more competitive and individual and utilitarian, then the tribe might rebel against that person for saying, hey, you didn't do it the right way. That's not what we, what we believe in. You went against our thief or some of the gods or whatever. Uh, but what the Artisan has 
what is the evolutionary benefit of the artisan temperament adaptability a utilitarian approach which is that adaptability that ability to improvise in the moment and to be uh, and to be set up to be good hunters good warriors uh, because human history has not been long enough over the recent thousand years to have an evolutionary impact long so anyway that's the sort of the theory and you can get a little bit more on this in something like this book on evolutionary uh evolutionary psychology where it has these uh theories that's just a bit about waste to hip ratios uh so right some theories in there and it's like because and there is some overlap there with uh mind and brain the has sort of proper proper cognitive psychology book angus gelatly i've got that over there anyway if i was a five i'd have read it all right um so and again temperament so temperament is hugely important and in terms of actions it comes through between cooperative versus utilitarian i adaptive now there is a little wrinkle in that when an artisan is enneagram six fixated they are more fearful but they tend to be a bit more counterphobic so you just need to sort of look for their preference uh so if we see here that so you've got the kersey intellects logistics so this correlates so this would be like the social plane of of si with te yeah si with te it's so like the role drawn on those functions si with te enforcing standard operating procedure and you could say some third slot se as well with the enforcement so you've got logistics which draws on can i get those like if you see those things at the bottom so here si max so you've got these social roles and again this consistency this level of consistency and these empirical shows and the motivations it's all of these things where you've got an integrated con constellation of traits and in, of empirical traits but it's all going together and it's all way more than chance so it's not just a theory that's just made up slice and dice so this is why one of the reasons why i bring together um jungian type with Percy. and i'm not the first person to do this Linda Behrens is the first one that I know of that did this, that integrated Kersey with Jung. So, where you've got these predisposed roles and then the functions that that role correlates to. And then that can be debated. Again, something that's empirical that can be delated, debated. So we can say, okay, what we, you could then discuss you can look at the job of a supervisor and then think about which functions is this drawing on and you can do that for all the cursey roles and then you can say hmm how well does that work how do well does this prediction work out we look at the roles we look at the functions that it's theory theoretically drawing on and we can sort of like and debate it and discuss it and see like that maybe eeg the people see which like is the because dario has shown that the job will change someone's brain so you got but the point here is the common factor amongst these roles is si you got si with fe when it's like when you're doing these service kind of things where nurse doctor supplies by four people um these are informing roles and these are directive roles like you're a Gitan, you've got to make people work. Directive roles. And there's a little bit of a... Interestingly, the clubs come through with the concrete types, not in temperament. Where they come through is in interaction style. So if you see here, all of these directive 
concrete types, the directive instinctives, or the directive concrete types, the directive concreters, I'll call them. The, the concrete directors, I'll call them the concrete directors. These concrete directors, all ST, 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 ST. And so there's a, the club is coming through in the interaction style. And here, the club doesn't match, again, it matches all SF, they're all informant. They're all informant. SF, they're all got informant. Whereas the breakdown for NT and NF is different, where for NT and NF, uh, rationals and idealists, uh, what you have there is where the club matches the temperament in both cases. Here, the club matches the interaction style. And so let's then look at some Jungian traits, also some Kersey traits, as to why ESTJ is good at enacting this role of supervisor. Now, of course, in the theory, Kersey probably came up with it afterwards. He probably went like this. Uh, you know, also would have observed it as well, because again, you're seeing all these ESTJs being bossy. Um, and it's like you think, okay, in Kersey terms, they are expressive, so yes, but it means the same thing as extroversion. It's just like the social plane of extroversion. They're expressive and they're directive. So, directive and expressive, so in, in a preemptive initiator. And the preemptive initiator is predisposed to proactive enterprise. And then you've got here the uh, complementary collaborator and responsive accommodators are predisposed to reactive inquiry. All right. It took me ages to learn all these stuff from personality. It's like bash it in my brain. Let's go over it and over and over. SJ mode. Going over, sort of like rote learning, going over and over and over and over and over. Right. Um, and so you've got the type and then the role. So, theory wise, it is easier for it is easier for ESTJ to enact this role of the supervisor because ESTJ is expressive, directive, and a guardian. Therefore, it's got the logistical safekeeping intellect. So the role of ESTJ, there's no flex needed. It's natural. Now, in order to enact the role of inspector, where it's like inspecting a product or accountant, accountant, I think would be a fair example of an inspector, where, okay, the flex there is that the normally extroverting uh, ESTJ has to do something that's more of a lonely profession. So inspector accountant would be a hard would be not a great job for ESFJ because they want to like with people. And then another one, ESFJ, then it's like it depends. I it's like so with ESF with the role as supplier, the ESTJ, okay, it's an extroverted job. But now the ESTJ has to be nice. And that might be a flex. So for someone like you and Gatan. Like, say he's in a role where he's not in charge of somebody and he's selling something. He's, like, maybe supplying and, like, uh, supplying goods. It's like, now you've got to be nice, Yuri. Now you have to go against that preference of directiveness. And then, like, the role of nurse. So maybe you have ESTJ in the role of matron. Like, again, directive supervisory role. But of nurse, again, he would have to be reserved. He would have to be uh, informing. So that's more of a stretch, but it's all still within the logistical safekeeping intellect. And again, this is the social plane correlate of function pairs, either SI with FE or SI with TE. And you can see the correlates here. So this is making, I'm trying to make functions more real by saying that they're correlated, things correlated to the functions are real. Right, so, and now let's see about some of these other roles that ESTJ 
could enact. So, these other roles is like these SF roles would be harder for ESTJ to enact because they have to go towards their feeling side. So an ESTJ composer, that would be difficult, or ESTJ uh, show player, so actor or actress, English word, gender neutral. Uh, now, crafter. They could do that. They're an ST. They could... Um, these days you get like ISTPs, not just as like engineers and... Uh, uh, but also it's like coders. I'll give you some like arguably genius level ISD. One of them a genius level. So Wittgenstein, Amanda convinced me Wittgenstein, when we just discussed it for over an hour, that Wittgenstein, Ludwig Wittgenstein, one of the greatest philosophers, ISTP. And he wanted to be a philosopher and move from engineer because he wanted to make an impact. Uh, he wanted to be a great philosopher. And he concentrated on something that was concrete in philosophy, and that's language. Um, so, it's sort of like games within language. So you can almost have a little bit of tactics in there. Um, word games. Uh, and then also, we have, like, John Grinder. Uh, linguistics. ISTP, former Green Beret. So, now, and now promoter. I mean, there are some people who have mistyped Trump, like, as, like, ESTJ and ENTJ. I don't know what they're smoking, but <laughs> they have done that. But the point is there is that you could get an ESTJ act a little bit like ESTP. They've got the same interaction style, initiator, so in charge, and they can frequently both be Enneagram 8 fixated. But the difference is going to be concrete versus utilitarian, J versus P. Organized by the book versus improvisational. Uh, more thinking outside the box. Uh, right then, so that's sort of like a role enactment thing. So you can see that it's possible for, say, like ESTJ to enact these roles, but it's sort of like going out of preference for it but it's sort of intellectually capable for it and that correlates with the idea that all of these sd functions are strong functions so again if you look at the sort of the hierarchy of these um and we're still on the first function if you look at the hierarchy of this division in this model the first cut is club so all the ones in the valued club are there in the top four. And then within that club, it's valued. So it's like valued is subordinated to club. Club is the most important division. And that's consistent with Dario's data. So basically, the four strongest functions in ESTJ are on average, because like people can develop differently because of circumstances but on average the four strongest functions are the club functions therefore that is the most important organizing dichotomy then it's valued and unvalued and then it's default versus situational which is slightly annoying to me because i came up with default and situational so maybe if i were entp i would make a huge player a default versus situational and um like, because I came up with it. <laughs> but it's sort of like, it's built on some of the, like, I sort of put into words that people, that things that people already knew. It's just I termed it that default and situational. I just think I was, just was able to put words to something that a lot of people were sort of talking about. I just sort of systematized what people already knew, the way I see it. Or am I just saying that to legitimize what I'm saying? Probably not. So now I'm going to actually talk about that dichotomy that I think is third most important. So the default row. But Jung thought it was tremendously important. The extroverting and introverting. 
Whereas for Kersey, it's like the two closest were the type closest together to ESTJ is ISTJ. The type closest to INTP is ENTP. What are these called? These are called mirror pairs. Yeah. So, and then it's like default operating mode. If you want to see that, because I'm not going to read all this out, because you know I've got to get a wriggle on 45 minutes on the first few slides. Right. And then it's like default operating mode. You know what default means? It's like it's in like preferences. You default, you default settings, your default operating mode. Um, right. So I'll. I'll uh, concentrate on this. I'll read this bit out, though. For extroverting types, the default operating mode is, you guessed it, extroverting. This means the type defaults to extroverting. I, so it's like, that's that E preference in the MTI. I direct an attention towards action in the world and empirical data such as immediate sensory instinctual data. I have a diagram from Vanderhoop to sort of visually represent. Oh, really, Ben? Most diagrams visually represent. That's why they're called diagrams. But here it's the focus of attention is on the world and then secondarily on the personal reaction to the world. Whereas for the introvert, it's the subjective reaction to the world that is more of a focus of attention than the actual world. However, when the world is like situationally calling upon your attention, the introvert will situationally extrovert. You know, like when the introvert is being confronted by an opponent, time to extrovert and direct your attention outwards. This is not the time for NI. And having a daydream. Uh, right. Uh, okay. Talking about sensory instinctum. So, direct annotation outwards towards the world. And then I list four kinds of extroverter within the theory. Um, and this is sort of what artisans would do the sensory instinctual data. Uh, an empirical data is immediate sensory instinctual data. Then I'll oh, then go down to the bit at the bottom. Uh, instinctum. So sensory instinctum. I now call it sensory instinctum. Disgust, sexual attraction. There you go. Sexual attraction. Sexual attraction. What someone sees when they see a comely individual it's not just the senses is it and imagine your reaction to that or you see somebody and you think eh? and then your friend is like oh my god he she is so gorgeous and it's like what the reaction is complete is can be can be completely different it's like are you crazy so it's like, but the perception, it's not really perception because perception is related to thought. So don't like using that word. It's like a category now in cognitive psychology and has been claimed by cognitive psychology. A quarter of cognitive psychology is perception, right? They have experiments and data to back it up. They now own the word perception as far as I'm concerned. So the raw sensory experience in that case or somebody listening to some music, the reaction to that music is bound up with the sensory experience. And so again, again, with disgust, someone opens something up and so you say to somebody, oh, so you don't think that it's like, okay, open that up, like a tub of dis dis disgusting stuff. And it's like, ugh. Oh, you're feeling disgust at the moment. So that is an instinctual reaction within the limbic system towards what you're seeing. Now, especially if it stinks, 
right? Rotten smell, and it's like and someone's like gagging. It's like like you are having an emotional reaction bound up with what you are sensing. And then fear, the spider snake, put a tarantula in there, and it's like like it's bound up. It's instinctual. It's going towards the limbic system. Now, the problem with this distinction is it's not neat, and you get that distinction between feeling and emotion, but that's probably how the brain is arranged, because you've got a limbic system, and then you've also got this cerebral core, cerebral kind of uh, more, more cerebral, more complex feeling. Um, Van der Hoop would say, would give an example of someone knocks you, say out about someone someone knocks you and you have an instinctual reaction of annoyance or anger then you see it's a small child then you got all oh, the feeling states becomes more complex if it oh, okay or you see as an elderly person oh oh so it's like it the things become more mixed more complex more affected by thinking rather than that instinctual reaction uh so the instinctual reactions are more animal-like. Again, a dog has emotions. I don't know if a dog has feelings. You can see that a dog is happy. You can see that a dog is abused and cowering and fearful or angry. Like you can see that. And there's been some right, some theorizing by John B. Arden about the evolutionary advantage of emotions, rememory, and its utility for behavior in mammals because a snake for example just has a sort of an instinctive no not an instinctive because that's emotion then a reflex response whereas animals whereas mammals rather subset of animals uh mammals have a can learn from experience and have like that fear and it's like there's an emotional reaction to the experience gets bound up with the memory. Now that can have too much in human beings where you then get PTSD because of the emotional reaction at the time to the sensory experience was so extreme that it's been left with somebody. So say someone's a, a war veteran and their vehicle gets blown up and they see their friends blown to pieces and it's like they're continually thinking with that so you're saying that sense is not bound up with emotion right so discuss sexual sentiment excitement first minus blah, 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 that sense is bound up with emotional reactions and an impulse to habit or impactful action se curses artisans se wheelhouse seek stimulation and are audacious and adaptable chapter two van der Hoop's conscious orientation limbic system reacts to sensory input before it reaches the neocorticea sphere of feeling and thought latter includes perception and recognition this is our evolutionary her heritage right and that's in that book the mind and brain and then subjectifying oh yeah me elaborating on dario is the fact that extroverts are pretty good at at least the basic level of all the extroverting functions it makes sense if they're doing a lot of extroverting then they're thinking they're feeling they're sensing they're intuiting it's all going to be colored by that just through practice and then viewing on extroversion and again passive and active in the extrovert extroversion will tend to be more active in the introvert it's going to be more the situation calling on the person to extrovert especially if they're an in type right default row what we got now te we've done this wheelhouse I'm not going to read this through because I have to get a wriggle on 54 minutes. So if you pause that. Pause that to read and then move on. Uh, I'll just say something. And again, the SI. Uh, we've got it, got it here. Um, I'm just going to rejig this so that. So we've got SI here. It's a situational function, but with, like if we're talking about the, the guardian, like the SI and TE is like working so much together. Like on the guardian, TE used within the context of temperament. 
So what can I do here? So that's sub subjective instincting. Subjective instincting. Can I get it to go further across? Okay, you're just going to have to miss me. Right, so... An instinct to habit, routine, and orthodoxy. Right. And then you see the subfunctions there. Yeah. Um, there was somebody once being typed by Socionics, and they were being typed as like LSE, well, as LSE, not like LSE. Uh, and I asked the question Do you like description novels? This always works, pretty much always works. We always, like four or five times. There's never been an exception so far. Ask guardians about descriptions in novels. Do they like, like detailed description? They like detailed description. That's going towards the the um, imaginative subfunction of SI. They're good at it. Other types, they don't like all that description, especially the abstract types. They're more interested in the ideas, especially NS. They want like, the psychology of the characters. They don't want these like long descriptions of... Uh, of the room or clothing but for guardians it's evocative it's evocative because they have that imagination um but then again temperament is important uh yeah cozy protecting internal physical harmony um now what you're going to have is i think that because the escj is assertive it's an initiator it's going to draw on this assertive SI. Now, this is a, a theory of mine uh, inspired by Victor Galenka's DCNH, but I threw out normalizing because, look, SI is normalizing. Uh, just like with the press planes are from the pips, the intellectual level. Hang on a minute. Intellectual level, that's, that's thinking. So I threw out the intellectual level and then added, added a few others. But there you can see all the SI stuff. And that correlates to the Guardian. Now, have I got the table in here of... Yes, I have. I have the table of Guardian traits. So, whole type level with SI. Concerned. Authority. Belonging security this is small c conservative dependable beneficent actively kind a bit of fe in there but this sort of focus on yesterday the pessimism safely but surely and so it's like what has happened and and dario has sort of said this yeah their definitions of se and si are affected by temperament so this is what it is. If you want to know what SI is, it is effectively the essence of Guardian. That's what it is. I know it sounds like a perfume, a quirky perfume, but it's like it's essence of Guardian. It's the Guardian instinct. SI is the Guardian instinct. SE is the artisan instinct. See this difference, huge difference between impact and then like this is safety first seeking security this is it seeking excitement so guardians think that artisans are reckless right so now what i'm going to do is in fact what i might do is switch my light off did i do that that's not oh yeah that's something else is that, is that the SI? Right, that's the SI. Right, and then I'm going to talk about how this is sometimes... Some parts of SI might be like situational uh, introvert. So, for instance, the imaginative SI. Then you pretty much need to, like, introvert to do this, like, an activity such as reading the book, and again, that's entry description. That's a, sort of an introverting action. So, that's situational. Right, so I'm going to put that on screen but i've got to get a wriggle on uh right again situational row si so situational introverting in estj 
Again, SI is not as internal as the other introverting functions because, again, it's sensory instinctual. However, certain subfunctions of it are, as I mentioned before, SI imaginative and SI harmonizing. Because, again, it's like how you feel internally, as Jeff says, guardians will tell you about their medical problems. Um, whereas artisans can tend to ignore, especially the extroverting artisans, extroverting preference artisans, ESTP and ESFP can sort of ignore the inside of their bodies because they're more, it's more focused outwards. So again, they can be high endurance types for like with the adrenaline carrying them through pain. Uh, usually the best at dealing with pain artisans. Again, it's sort of like it fits with the sort of the, maybe the evolutionary predisposition towards uh being a good warrior especially for estp so i'm gonna get back to this just gonna switch the lights off because there's more light coming through the curtain right then compared to the so it's like i don't need to read this through um um I just said a bit like the situation includes something the personal does not. The idea that certain situations draw on certain faculties which are of opposite verting to the type, e.g. situations which draw on the introverting functions of the extrovert. So example of the ESTJ. ESTJ reading a book with all of that sensory description in it. I think that is an introverting activity. Because whilst it's outside of oneself, and especially if it's just, you just like you are, it's like imagining it within, based on what is real. It's with that sensory, and like you're going into the world of, you're going to a made up world that is being described and not. So I think that is an introverting activity, and certainly like thinking to yourself and pondering, like, I guess it's. it's within um and then a bit on Jung on uh introversion uh you pause that take it in i'll try and get this under two hours so wheelhouse again because it's si uh working with te so it correlates well to those roles. Oh, you probably won't have seen this before. Well, in this series anyway. But again, it's an old slide. 1512BH28. Oh, that's using my uh, <laughs> date system. So February, final month of that year. Or February 2016, if you're using the conventional calendar. So this is like a TI argument for at least the irrational functions. So, uh, I'm all I should I feel like editing that out in GIMP and putting developing. So, I'm going to concentrate on this. So, oppositions there, SI ethos if it ain't broke, don't fix it. NI, change, improvement, worsening, development, opposite for SI. So this is a TI argument about getting your definitions opposite. And then that would be the TI, but then testing it empirically. Do we see those oppositions in the people that resemble the types? And if it, there is that consistency between the theories, it shows it's modeling something there. That it's way more beyond just chance. All of these relationships between these ideas that play out in reality at the whole type level. The fact that SI is the opposite of uh, NI in that way, developing versus stabilizing. That, and again, tandem use with any alternative of now. Yeah. Uh, SI and SE are opposite in the terms of 
in, in terms of my, the instinctual response to the situation, excitement, fear, or not liking the new, want to prefer things to stay the same, liking the sort of the new and novel, a bit like any. Um, uh, now, the past, um, what else? Sort of like other differences between SI and SE. Oh, yes, between the temperament things of going towards security and buy the book. And then going towards freedom um cooperative utilitarian those differences between the temperaments of guardian and artisan and then how se and ni are different in the se is about being in time in the moment and being up time directed outwards and now ni is about being through time and about being in downtown i these are nlp concepts written by two sdps who had the hots i've cleaned it up who had the hots for ni because they had really had the hots for hypnosis which draws on ni and i asked dario about this about which types are more susceptible to hypnosis and it is the njs and in, in intuitives in particular what well, no. <laughs> i mean intuitives and the njs in particular um because they're going to like a chance like state anyway so and then you can see how ne is different from se now versus alternatives and so how does that play out at the whole type level the stps don't like don't like people digressing and tangential because why are the tangent because of the the similarity the commonalities whereas se is about the specifics as dario says immersing in the present context so this arrangement, these, I sort of pushed it up a bit. The four categories of the multiverse we perceive, which is another way of doing it, of, like I said, future, past, now, alternatives. So something to ponder, maybe, up to you, as always. So SE third slot this is in dario's data this is in socionics um i'll get onto that later but here um and also dario said like like he now uses my notation where it's like sitx uh so in, like, in the paragraph before that, he mentions like SITX, but he put like a line in it. Uh, I used to write it as SITX, and then, but then there was a YouTuber called Tinks, and it's like, hang on a minute. And so then I put TI underscore NX to make it um, only return my results, only return the results that were my videos. Uh, so let's get on track, SE. So third slot. Fish doesn't know it's wet. Oh yeah, this, yeah, it's not quite that. Um, yeah, I don't have like a, a, a little bit of a change in my thinking when I was writing a, a profile of an ENFP, and the fact that it's not that this that slot is unvalued. It's just not valued as much as the first two functions, and it also depends on development. Also, I'm going to say that. What about Yuri Gatan there when he's saying? you got to make people work. Make people work. And you're going to end, and then Kersey talking about enforcing the rules. So you get a little bit of extroverting sensing there from the point of view of socionics, where it's like they call it forced and sorics, like the aggressive part. Forced and sorics, again, combat. So again, combat and some sport hierarchy. So you can see how ESTJ, when there, someone is enforcing the rules, that someone enforcing the rules is drawing on TI, SI, and SE, those top three functions. Now let's think about some other types. And again, getting a consistency here with Kersey roles and functions and this model, but also other 
models as well where like it's high this third one so entp any ti te the role draws on those functions the role of counselor ni fe fi draws on those uh functions uh maybe role of teacher what or charismatic leader fe ni with some any I mean, like some metaphors like change a point of view that um so again i don't want to go through all 16 types so i'm going to put this on screen and then i'm going to so you see here adaptation to circumstances so a factor is so uh let's see how estj is going to do with this adaptation to circumstances not going to be great at that estj because what's their, pre their predisposition is you do it by the book but somebody like Kristen, and so um so if we say she's working with a business and she's working with uh and she's got all of these like strategies that she's read in these different books and just learn all of these strategies approved strategies tried and true and then when she gets this situation and she's going to adapt but it's going to be adaptation within the temperament so what does that mean that means what does that really mean practically that means picking one of those established practices going towards an authority going towards the try and true and picking one of those strategies that works so that would be made that's level one creativity for estj level two creativity will probably be be able to and with the ne as well be able to maybe create a new process based on an established process that is sort of using that other process as a paradigm to create the new process, but it's still sort of like it's going towards, it's basing itself off something and emulating something that is like tried and true and maybe then creating a new process. And maybe what's happening there is you get an, an ESTJ that's drawing on NE and TI in creating a new process that is derived, maybe derivative, from an existing process. And then, but that way, a conservative creativity within ESTJ, because the focus of attention is not to do the new and crazy, wacky and original uh, idea and get patted on the head. And it's like, oh, you're such a genius, NTP. It's to minimize risk, and it's to achieve the results with minimal risk and effectiveness. Project management, reducing risk, risk management. And again, and in lots of jobs, the STJ is not going to get fired. Whereas other ones, was, what do you do that for? What do you do that stupid risk? What do you need all this risk for? You're all out and you're in. Wacky NTP taking all these risks. Get back in the research department where you where you like can afford to fail but find out some interesting lessons along the way so i just come up with that now using ti and finding it within temperament because i'm thinking about functions within temperament i'm able to sort of come up with this on the fly no, because i'm just thinking deductively from these principles so temperament 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 uh, a lot from Jeff about temperament. Uptime. Again, these are two, using two NLP dichotomies, features of uh, SE. And what does Kersey say? Now. 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 The place is now. And in, in time, the place is now. Opposite of NI. So... I was banging on there about creative TE, uh, but again, it's about the harmonizing. And then, and then it's like, 
then it becomes tricky. It's like, well, Ben, is that creative TE or is that harmonizing SE? Well, it's a bit of both, isn't it? Because like there's not separate, they blend together. These are sort of active mental verbs, these are cognitive processes. Again, the fish again, again, and so SE is not used for its own sake. It's used to achieve ESTG, ESTJ goals. Enforce the rules. Make those artisans do what they should do. The sergeant major, the jewel sergeant, Yuri Gitan. Club functions. Yes, I've got a cold as well. So if you just take that in, um, rather than me reading it out, Mind you, certain roles, like, say, FI. So it's like, so these cursey roles, they certainly draw on the top two, and sometimes it draws on the third slot. I mean, it's not perfect. Like, the role of protector, does it draw on FI? Well, maybe, like, you know, imagine how the other person feels and empathy with the other person, maybe. Again, here, Johnson allies. So this is SE and TI in ESTJ. Look at that key finding. 96% of subjects have their top three functions from the same club. Now, given that by definition, the first two are always from the same club, then it's not that wacky. Then it's not that much out there. But it's like it's pretty high, again, for that. If you want to take that in. I have, I have to move on a little bit. Again, they're TI. SEN. So clubs, clubs, clubs. It's consistent with it's consistent with Vanderhoop, it's consistent with Socionics. You know, I only mention Socionics when, when it is consistent. I'll mention when it isn't. Okay, TI. So again, as I gave in that example, I'm just thinking about Kristen in like various sort of jobs that she's done. So, like, in that example, like, she's talked about getting the processes right. So, she's worked with businesses and she's worked as a teacher. So, she has the ability to, and she's talked about, yeah, this, this might be an example with Kristen. Because she's talked about it on the channel. That's why I can talk about her. And I see her as a creative subtype, ESTJ, as somebody who is ESTJ and has that temperament but goes beyond the stereotype. So, um, in using the social benefit ring, so she's been, so, using the TI of socionics of social benefit rings, which comes from the arrangement of the model, of, so, for example, when talking to a pupil that was that has that that has ISFJ preferences or resembles ISFJ, and that pupil has a problem. What she then does is adjusts, and then teaches the pupil from the point of view of an INTJ. And the theory there is that she's then speaking to the social adaptation block of the type. So this is an ESTJ that has taken this principle of social benefit rings. And applied it to teacher. So, what have we got there? With with so again, trying to go to those practical examples. What has Kristen done? So she has the TI to be able to understand that theory, understand socionics, and and but she's got this guardian and practical thinker concept. So it's apply that to a apply that so it's a practical application in she in teaching to help people so that's one example then we have the example of something that i came up with on the fly but it, it's she's she's going to have done it based based on what she said for te in that one let's just read that through Again, a quote from her, creative assimilation of established practices from various disciplines. Oh, various disciplines, a little bit of any value in there. Combining TE and intuition can account for changing markets. But I'd also imagine the, 
yeah, again, assimilation of established practices. Right, so uh, that guardian trait that I mentioned of going towards what works, what has a track record. So, so she might do a bit of integration of theories as well because she knows about Kersey Temperament. She knows about Socionics. She's watched some of these videos. Um, and she knows about Enneagram. And so she'll be integrating these theories or at least being able to account for them as factors. And she's done some videos on this channel where Jonathan has talked about Enneagram and the application of that with uh, in teaching. And she's also communicating with Sabrina, who's a, a, a doctor of education. So she's taking these theories in, these different points, and applying those theories in teacher. That's one. Uh, I don't know if she does TII because that's all internal. Um, and I would say the subjective based thinking, the structural logic, will to systematize any categories. I don't know about that. So I would say it more comes through on the fly in the way that she applies her TE. You know, like I said, like if she's got a business situation and starting up and helping people to get the processes right in a business as a consultant where and she helps to come up with the processes for that business based on experience based on what works so guardian temperament uh got the t there going on sort of like empirical thinking that works and then the ti is going to come in in adapting that and deriving that from the TE to suit the situation in the particular business. And so that is using TI within the context of the guardian temperament. And it's a TI that is rooted in and using TE as an anchor and is not Jung might say, because he was a little bit bigoted against uh, TE, he might say, oh, that's just it. <laughs> well, I don't know even did that voice. He would use a Swiss accent and probably said it in German. Like, you, that's just the sequela of TE. But Christian might say, well, I'm not trying to be you, Carl. I'm trying to get this business with the right processes based on what works and what has worked in other businesses and going towards a paradigm that works and something and applying methods that work and adjusting them just for the circumstances of this business. So that is how I would be a, what I believe is a practical example of her TI. It might be good to do a video with her, which would be a follow up to this video with her sort of commenting on what I've said uh, in this video. Right. This is something with me sort of banging on about. My, this is like INTP sort of pedantry and sort of like going on about models and that lot. Because, like, as, as that I gave that example, like, Model G would predict that EST, ESTJ is rubbish at TI. But I think I've just given an example where ESTJ is not rubbish at TI. They just use it in a they, they can use it in a limited way, but highly effective way, effective for the purposes of TE and for the temperament. So it might just be like, for example, the ENTJ uses TI in a more demonstrative way because ENTJ is more abstract and TI tends to be involved in abstraction. Oh, yeah, and that's for TI. It's just sort of reiterating that slide. Right, and the same with the INTPs. 
How many anti P's are in computing and science? Computing and science is an empirical method. It's T E in that. It's joined on to anti P is not useless at T E. Might not prefer it. And theoretically they don't, but you know, a lot of them working in those fields. Any. Okay. Oh, I had a theory about this. You're an INTP. You're likely to have. So you've got a separate club. Why is it a club function? Well, because the perverse sensory instincting over in Chewetung. So it's over here. Again, club. Why is feeling over here? Because of the preference for thinking. ST. ST. Preference for sensing, sensory instincting, means that intuiting is going to be uh, subordinate to that preference. Preference for thinking, subordinated preference for feeling. But when I'll get to it later on, guardians wish to belong, even the STJs. So that is why, on average, STJs have better people skills than NTJs, especially ISTJ compared to INTJ. Because the ICJ at least wants to belong. Dario's just had a lot of training. Like he, he is INTJ preferences. Like people out there, oh, it's too nice to be INTJ. <laughs> no, he's like he's just done a lot of NLP, and like if you're teaching people for about twenty years, and you're gonna pick up some skills. And if you're in that role of a college uh, lecturer, right? So this is from Shalina. Uh, yeah, it's more than just pattern recognition. You know, you know, they really try and dumb it down in personality hacker. Yeah, it does something once the pattern, especially when it's a dominant position. Right, okay, so I'm going to give an example of how I think any works in ESTJ. So, so again, Kristen, let's use Kristen as an example. She's got all these methods techniques in her locker in a in a memory bag memory bag memory bank and um she is and then she's got the present situation in front of her so all this knowledge all these like practical thinking all these techniques all these algorithms and you've got the situation in front of her and then it's like oh this situation is like this situation where this method applies. So there is transcontextual thinker. Ah, this is like this situation. And in this situation, we do this. That perception of similarities between the present context and all of those methods and techniques in your memory. That is any with SI. With that SI predisposition towards going towards the tried and the true. By linking the present situation to a method, a tried and true method in a similar situation. Oh, this situation is like this that we do. Right. That's how I think uh, ESTJ and guardians in general use any within the context of the guardian temperament and with SI. Whereas EST. It, whereas artisans, STPs, are looking at the situation specifics. Because sometimes that doesn't always work. Because you might have a novel situation. If you've not encountered it before, you can't find a technique and you're a little bit stuck. And it's like, I don't know what to do in this situation. I've not encountered it before. Then the guardian is stuck. This is why guardians are better in stable situations where they know what they're doing and have got all this experience. STP is, and also the STP is not just not the foot, it's not the first time the ESTP has improvised in this hypothetical situation, they've done it before, and so the STP is able to read the situation and improvise within the specifics of the situation rather than going back off past experience. Now, maybe though, unconsciously, some past experience is coming in, but it's more on the details of the moment. So STPs are better at expeditiously solving the situation in front of them using a new method. And this goes towards utilitarian cooperative dichotomy of, say, the STJ is being by the book. No, 
you know, using any to be by the book. Oh, what does the book say? But not just got one book. So you can imagine someone like Kristen maybe got a library of tea. Oh, we go towards this. Or anyone who's been in the profession where they've got all of these techniques, they've built all these techniques up. And it's not just by the book. It's not just one expert. It's a whole range of experts and practices. And then again, let's go to higher level guardians. Right. And Christian's probably in that level, but it's like where it goes, um, where it's like not just knowing the techniques, but keeping up with what is the latest technique. So a guardian doctor, what is the technique that is used now that is being accepted? And keeping up with what is new and the new pro that would be like, but it's still what has been tested and has proven to work rather than doing something new and cutting edge because it also reduces risk reduces legal liability all that sort of stuff safely does it um looking at things in different point of view maybe trans yeah i've sort of done that what i sort of said about how i think guardians use any especially with te um you can sort of think about how that is used in that context and again in context of role enactment so I'm trying to give examples where it's externalized and we can say, okay, that correlates to the theoretical definition of, of the function that you're using, Ben. Right. Um, that's Dario on the, uh, on the clubs that I've mentioned before. Is this going to be the longest video on the, on the types? Um, right. Dabbling tertiary, so tertiary, the tertiary any. Yes, yeah, so you saw with Yuri Gitana, like when he had his any moment when he was flirting with that woman on camera. Like, you know, that's not going to happen these days. Although, I think a female ESTJ would. Uh, get away with it especially if like the female estj was um like five foot one and the guy was like six foot five and built like jack reacher in the tv series and i was like what's the danger so there should be more latitude there'd probably be more latitude there for like because it's not non-threatening if it's a female on average right um that's why I think female characters have more latitude uh, and also there's not that many good roles for women so I concentrate on female characters five of the leads in Wilma's housemates five of the eight are female yeah as you can see there so the any is used to serve the guardian needs, but they have their moments where they use any. So you saw Gatan there being funny. Um, I knew an ESF did based on the real Rena. So ESFJ Rena, she wrote songs, she wrote some poetry before that. I would say again, I got a bias towards a creative subtype. So creative subtype ESFJ, some any there, but it comes second to the guardian traits. Whereas for ENTPs. And ENFP is they're going with that and they're just like usually seven fixated and going towards those ideas. And you'll probably see in future you should see Lauren on the channel who will hopefully be playing Wilma. Fingers crossed, she's really good. Um ENFP preferences. Uh I believe. I believe. I believe. Uh, Enneagram 7, I believe. Uh, usually there are those preferences to the people that like my work. It's like another NFP. Right. Because um, really there should be more SFPs in the acting profession. Right. So, again, about the dabbling tertiary. FI. Um... Yeah, I think this is going to articulate the subjective aspect. It's going to articulate the guardian temperament. This is values coming from within. 
So Yuri Gatan, so he grew up in an artisan family, and it's like, and you might think on the inside, these, these people are not responsible. If that's if being responsible is not the conventional value, then it's not FE. And if the Guardian is thinking that the people that they grow up with and they're thinking because the 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 value around them might be ah oh, just let it go play it by ear that's like that but their sort of core feeling is you're not being responsible that's coming from within and that is a temperament related fi value so this is what i think that a lot of the fi values of estjs are going to come from their temperament and I can't really say anything more than that because it wouldn't be true for all ESTJs. It would be like saying, all INTPs drink iron brew. You know, I can't, I can only say what's common between all ESTJs. Um, the FI is valued more than FE. Yes, but... But you could argue that an ESTJ values FE more than an ENTJ because all guardians have this part of the brain that's active, that is attentive to um, social feedback, that part, attend to social feedback, feel embarrassed, region T5. All guardians, even the STJs. So it's tricky. And so guardians wish to belong belong by using fe as a tool knowing the social customs right so usually estjs are going to have better social skills than entjs and again the estjs if like like 50 percent of people are guardians and the estj is a guardian then they're going to know most of the people to deal with are going to be like whereas the entj they're rational and they're a lot more different from most people and the entjs think that most people are incompetent and lack vision, lack their vision, which they see as the right vision. Right. Um, FI features. Um, you can read that. Well, I, I shouldn't say that. You know, like you can see it. You can, I don't need to tell you. You can read it. You can read that, like there. Um, Again, the ethics that they assert, I think, are going to be related, related to temperament. Um, maybe this when reading a novel, but they're not going to be doing a lot much evidence that your guitar does that. Um, maybe it's weak. It's like it's right down here as a situational council club function rather than as a uh, a club default function. So it is inferior. So it only ticks the box of value. Right. Um, hot for B side. All right. So that is the inner NFP. The inner INFP. Any and FI. In ESTJ. So who would that be? Oh, there's two characters. Might see them in season three. And if it gets written, Ben, this is like of Sophie and Constance, the Nigerian mother matriarch, gets on well with the INFP, uh, old school extreme feminist, uh, catophobic six. Uh, right, there you go. Like, Right, cat club, cat club situational. Right, yeah, okay. All right, all right, all right, context of that, yeah. So again, six in that position. Um, that's still going on about like more. Yeah, maybe it can get integrated. Uh, so again, someone like Kristen, 
uh, ESTJ, but an ESTJ that knows a lot about typology and is sort of using it in teaching. So again, again, like different levels, different, that's a lot of working with bits. It's like, and female as well, because the females, like the research has shown that female people with a thinking preference have higher developed feeling overall than the male thinkers. Uh, so this is why if you're looking at the IN types and looking generally across the population, the incidence of autism is far less in females than in males. And usually the social skills of INTJ female is better than INTJ male. Uh, and there are differences between the main difference in brains between men and women. Maybe the only sort of really important difference is that the, brain, the two hemispheres in women are a bit more connected with the corpus callosum. Right. The two cortices. Um, not really much that I can say about that because, again, so maybe it get becomes... In, so I imagine in Kristen that the FI gets integrated by thinking about Enneagram. Right. Uh, right, so yeah, hopefully we could do a, 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 do a video with Kristen where she gives a feedback on this video. Um, Effie. Right, so I think, so like I said, temperament. Temperament, temperament, temperament. ESTJ yearns to belong. Belonging is going to draw on Effie. Business, you're going to be using Effie. So again, it's also maybe the situation that, so if, say if, if Kristen were a supervisor like you or Gitan, then she might, she's not going to be using Effie as much. So this is like the roles that she's enacted and the situations that she finds herself in demands a bit more Effie. So if you're teaching pupils these days and they're, paying for it you're not gonna be able to lay down the law in an old school victorian teacher way or where it says like some effie is being developed by the situation but i know it's not a situation but you know what i mean it's like and so it's going to be developed more just through the life experience the type of role enactment like i said and if yuri gitan was in like roles where he had to be sort of nicer then his personality would have developed differently because those situations would draw more on effie um right then so yeah i think that and because and so if we compare to entj because entj also has seven slot fe in fact it's the only other type that does have seven slot fe because you only have seven slot fe if you have first slot t because it's like this is the most repressed and then this is something from dario those functions paralleling the top two are the least preferred so TE suppresses FE, SI suppresses NI. So, but in business, you got to use FE. Customer is always right. And, and also cooperative versus utilitarian. ESTJ is more cooperative than ENTJ. Therefore, I think FE is better in uh, E. ESTJ than ENTJ, but I would say that on the other hand, on average, ENTJs would have better TI than ESTJs because ENTJ is utilitarian and ESTJ is cooperative, more by the book. And so because ENTJ is utilitarian, more thinking for itself or by preference, then they're going to draw more on TI because of that. Doing things your own way, drawing on subjective thinking. Right. Uh, then it's going to be a bit on this disdained column. The disdained functions of FE and uh, uh, NI. So the ENFJ. Yeah. So again, if you... Uh, yeah, for certain narrow uses, the merits of this function can be seen by the type, even though it runs counter to the dominant function. 
But the temperament factor, as I mentioned about a minute ago, because ESTJ wants to belong. Uh, I'm going to move on. NI. Okay, so this is weakest function in ESTJ. These are the... Um, these are the uh, features from an LP point of view. Um, I'm going to give... Um, I'm going to try and speculate about how this works. So, opposite is stabilizer. So, I would think that this comes through in the behavior of the ESTJ being too stuck in its ways. Not changing with the times. But like I said, I believe higher level SE usage would change with the times to the latest accepted way of doing things. And so I would say that that's, like I said, medical doctors, you have a guardian medical doctor and say they're uh, 55 years old, they're not going to be prescribing the same medicine that they did 20 years ago. So they're going to keep up. Uh, but it's not going to be cutting edge. It's going to be, as I said before, the latest approved method. Finally, after all the results in and the tested in, the testing in, right, the other ones, the authorities, the, the latest approved method, right. Uh, not going outside the box. Um, and again, in that, you've got the situation in the United States of legal liability and the practice of defensive medicine. Uh, you know, so the, uh, a more utilitarian doctor, maybe in a different uh, locality, might say, well, there's this medicine, it's not really tested, but you're going to die anyway, so you might as well try. You've got nothing to lose. You know, a utilitarian approach where it's like an STP approach would be you got cancer, none of these drugs work, you're going to try this one. There might be side effects, it might kill you, but you're going to die anyway, but you might live. But you see, the thing is then, the STJ point of view would be, well, you're not really sure. And then the relatives would say, you killed them because you gave them that medicine that wasn't tested or had these side effects. And they died of those side effects. Right. There we go. So this is an example of the real world affecting choices and because of the, this, what, what known in Kersey as the social field. And also, you might have a situation where you've got an artisan doctor and it's like they may have been sued in the past or know someone who's been sued and they go against their preference and act in a way that if you were just looking at the behavior, you go, oh, that's a bit guardian. That's a bit by the book. But if you talk to them, like get uh, yeah, the difference between behavior and motivation, preference versus reality, as Jeff would say, then you get the preference. So again, I need to answer this question. So okay, David Mark Kersey, the son of David West Kersey, the psychologist. David Mark Kersey, who might end up being acknowledged as a genius if his theory is accepted of sort of like a group theory approach to uh various subatomic particles um where's he got that the uh i think i think maybe it's the higgs boson is the monster group something like that and cult and there's a theory of information um so try to get it under two hours um so he would say that guardians are scheduled and nts are planful and Something about the NT is sort of like having an idea of the goal and being able to change the plan towards the goal. Whereas, the, and so it's like you could say the NTJs are more result focused and <clears throat> STJs are more processed focused. Uh, And it's harder for ESTJs to adapt the plan towards the goal. 
and, and like I said, it's that stabilizing versus developing. They're not really, really going to go towards anything new. They want to either do the same thing as the past or say, example, with Kristen, like if she's coming up with new processes, but it's consistent with a paradigm which has worked before. Um, so, yeah, let's move on a bit. Um, I, I, Architect, I, I don't know. I can't see that. Um, not submissive ESTJ. No, they're a caregiver and initiator. Uh, ENTJs as well, but like in romance, they get a bit submissive. I don't know about this. All I can say is about that it, it comes through in the stabilizing preference and do it in a conservative way rather than breaking new ground uh, for its own sake. It's uh, like I said, it's innovation within continuity i would say and i think that, i think Kristen would be an, a good example of that innovation within continuity and then that's oh yeah that's, that's the same as before except it's highlighting a different bit and that's just about the weakest function in the psyche so i suggest you uh pause oh yeah here we go there's a bit um uh yeah about the the end yeah, no, so for example but in some cases it can be binary and an all or nothing lacks appropriate degree sense it tends to be totally avoided or used as a blunt instrument usually without skill e.g estj esfj resembler who makes rigid plans for the future showing lack of nuance and intuition of development and i right uh anything else disdain functions and cons and least value right okay Gotcha. Uh, a bit of a bit of I'm gonna go quickly through these slides, get it under two hours. So it backs up on Odyssey automatically. That right. So you see them all? Those all, they're not people. Plus planes. Uh, that was from Victor's pips. That was from Victor's pips. That was from Victor's pips. Although if it's psychological, I just put the actual function there itself. The role in that with these would like be the Kersey role variants. Linguistic. Oh, again, TE inductive going towards data, going towards like you'd be able to think for yourself, right? Again, SE stuff. Again, it's against the temperament of ESTJ. Uh, some stuff on SI, various different SI man, probably STJ. No, 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 no. I mean, don't know. It could be like ESFJ. Um, like, but again, tidiness, etiquette, etiquette, the way people should behave. Concerned for his internal bodily harmony ben not everyone who uses a combi reacher <laughs> is a guardian hms inflexible there's a guardian ship oh yes yeah, so there you go that's um may i quote you on that there you go carol linden enfp resembler preferences as a business effective with people.com there you go, STJ. The right tool for the right job in the right way. Right, and I did that bit. We did him. Gatan. <laughs> oh, handsome man. Right, that's the profile overall. Oh, yeah, if you... um. Go to my about page. You'll be able to download a PDF with all of these and it will rescale and it will be sharp when you go in. This is just a, a PNG. So if you go all the way in, it gets a bit blurry. Um, but if you download the PDF, it will rescale. Um, so again, yes, TJ, hello. Six minutes. And then there's all the roles that correlate to. So you see the, see the functions that they correlate to in my opinion because 
uh, again, these are the roles, the roles, not the types, the roles. Complementary is this is the glove, the type is the hand. So ENFJ is, so ENFJ has lead FE and secondary NI, the role of educator, I believe. So it's like there is a correlation between these predisposed roles and the top two functions in the type. And again, supervisor, enforcer rules, uh, mobilizer, CEO, where intuition time with TE, like the arranger of contingencies, the inventor with it, and they've got strong TE as well, third slot, uh, designer, designer of systems and theories. That's, that's, that's the, so I would say that these roles are the social plane of these functions when used in this combination. So it's, so it's not just FE, because it's FE with NI. FE with NI is these two. FE with SI is these two. Um, uh, TE with SI are these two. Monitoring. So monitoring is the social plane correlate of TE with SI coordinating resources towards a long-term strategic objective is the Kersey correlate of those two. Let's go try and get... I have got not many minutes. Right. Pause, please, to take that in. I mentioned that before. Pause, please, to take that in. Done, done that. Done that. Done that. Did that. Again, artisan stuff on the left. Guardian stuff on the right. My one score, my one out of 16 score, and I don't feel bad about that. Because I think the function is a bit stupid. <laughs> but I was six as well. So I'm going to stop now. I have finished, and maybe we'll do a um, follow up video with Kristen.